we are applying the convolution concept on the input and the impulse response with the desire to get the output y of n. With the desire to get the output y of n. Yes or no? The concept of convolution, the operator of convolution is applied on both of them. Operators here are nothing but input and the impulse response. With the desire to get what? With the desire to get the output y of n. Now, we know y of n is equal to summation x of k, h of n minus k, k is equal to minus infinity to infinity. So first thing is that we will be knowing the conventional procedure. Okay, so what is the conventional procedure here? Is that we will be provided with x of n and h of n. We will be provided with the x of n and h of n to start with. So the step one is that change the independent variable. Change independent variable from n to k. Because if you see, here you are having x of k and in a way h of k. So given the input and the impulse response, where the independent variable is time n, now we are changing the independent variable from n to k. We are changing the independent variable from n to k. Right? So that here we are having the input as x of k, now it is h of k. Second step is that apply time reversal. Apply time reversal on h of k. So if I apply the time reversal, then this becomes what? h of minus k. Yes or no? This is what is time reversal. On h of k, if you apply time reversal, it becomes h of minus k. This is the second step. Third step, see here, I have x of k and I want h of n minus k. I have x of k, I want h of n minus k. Right? So, from h of minus k, I wanted to get h of n minus k. So, what is that I have to apply? From x of k, I mean, from h of minus k, if I want h of n minus k, what is the operation that I have to perform? Very good. Time shifting. So, the step 3 is that apply time shift. The step 3 is that apply the time shift. Can you please tell me what is the amount of time shift I have applied? If you want h of n minus k from h of minus k. So, are we not shifting after reversal? So, whenever applying the shifting after reversal, whatever you have done before that has to be taken as common. Whatever I have done before, I have to take it as common. So, now the operation I am performing is that k becomes k minus n, isn't it? The operation I have to do is that k becomes k minus n. k becomes k minus n. So, if n is a positive number, then what we are applying is nothing but delay to get h of n minus k. If n is a negative number, then what we are doing is nothing but advancing. For example, if n is equal to minus 1, then k becomes what? k plus 1, which is nothing but advancing operation on k. If the value of n is plus 1, which is a positive number, then the operation we are performing is k becomes k minus 1, which is a delay. Okay, so when you are applying this operation, when you are applying this operation, then the result you are getting is h of n minus k. Then the result you are getting is h of n minus k. Okay, so now you have x of k and h of n minus k. You have x of k and you have h of n minus k. Now what is the operation you have to perform on them? You have x of k and you have h of n minus k. Step 4 is the multiplication. Multiply x of k and h of n minus k. Step 5 is that add all samples. 
So what we are doing here, summation k is equal to minus infinity infinity. This is nothing but addition of all the samples of the product x of k, h of n minus k. So this is what is the result that you got is the output. So I'll come back to the first step. The first step is that you are changing the independent variable from n to k. You are changing the independent variable from n to k. The second step is that you are applying time reversal on h of k. So if you apply time reversal, it becomes h of minus k. The third step is that you are applying time shift. The third step is that you are applying time shift. So when you apply time shift, you are getting h of n minus k. So once you are having x of k and h of n minus k, then the operation that you are doing between both of them is nothing but the multiplication. The operation that you are doing between both of them is the multiplication. Now once you have multiplied both of them, lastly you are going to do the add all the samples. Add all the samples. Okay. This is what is nothing but the conventional procedure. So let us take a question that if I am having x of n is equal to 1 comma 3 h of n is equal to find y of 1 comma y of 3 find y of 1 and y of 3 using conventional method we will be discussing the method by which it becomes very easy to do the convolution okay let us find the values of y of 1 what is the step 1 step 1 is to change the independent variable from n to k so that you will be having x of k and h of k. x of k is nothing but 1 comma 3. h of k is nothing but 3 comma 1. x of k is 1 comma 3 and h of k is 3 comma 1. The second step is the time reversal. So what is h of minus k? Can you please tell me? h of minus k. Perfect. This is h of minus k. Third step is that you want what? You want y of 1. You know the formula for y of n, right? y of n is equal to summation x of k h of n minus k. So if you want y of 1 summation x of k h of 1 minus k h of 1 minus k. So you already have x of k now you want h of 1 minus k. You already have x of k. You just want h of 1 minus k. So let us do h of 1 minus k. So to get h of 1 minus k, what you have to apply? From h of minus k, if you want h of 1 minus k, what is the operation you have to apply? What is the operation you have to apply? So take minus as common. So minus 1 plus k. So the operation is k becomes k minus 1. The operation is k becomes k minus 1. You are applying a delay here. We are applying a delay here. Right? So because the minus sign indicates a delay. If you are applying a delay of 1 unit, you can move the arrow towards left. So we will be having h of 1 minus k, which will be equal to 1, 3. Which will be equal to 1, 3. So now I have x of k and h of 1 minus k. So step 4 is that I have to multiply x of k into h of 1 minus k. So what is x of k? x of k is 1, 3. h of 1 minus k is also 1, 3. So if you multiply both of them, the result is going to be x of k into h of 1 minus k, which will be 1, 9. It will be 1 comma 9. The last step is that is the summation of all the samples of x of k and h of 1 minus k. So summation of all the samples is going to be 1 plus 9 which is equal to 10. The summation of all the samples is 1 plus 9 which is equal to 10. Right, so this is nothing but the value of y of 1 using the conventional method. So the next uh, value you want is y of 3. The next value you want is y of 3. So if you want y of 3, the simple change that we have to do here is that 
In the place of n, we have to keep three. In the place of n, you have to keep three. Okay. So if you want to keep three here, what is the amount of delay that we have to apply? See, the arrow is presented n equal to zero, right? The arrow n equal to zero is present. Okay. H of 3 minus k. On h of minus k, you have to apply the delay of 3 units. You have to apply the delay of 3 units means 1, 2, and 3. It means h of 3 minus k will be, the arrow will come here, 0, 0, something like this. Okay, the arrow is here. And there is a comma. So, 0, comma, 0, comma, 1, 3. Now, when you multiply, So 0, 0, 1, 3. If you multiply both of them, what are we going to get? Multiply 0 into 1 is 0, 3 into 1, I mean 3 into 0 is 0, 0, 0. So complete 0. Add all the samples. It is 0. See, the other method that we are going to use is mathematical formula. Directly we use the mathematical formula. It means without doing any shifting scaling, nothing to do. I mean, we anyway didn't use any shifting, I mean scaling. But we have used shifting concept and we have used the reversal concept. Now without that, if we are using the mathematical formula directly, bluntly, y of n is equal to summation, k is equal to minus infinity to infinity, x of k, h of n minus k. Directly put the value of n equal to 1. If I put the value of n equal to 1, then the formula is what? x of k, h of 1 minus k, the value of k changes from minus infinity to infinity. Expand the formula. If you expand it, let us start from k equal to 0. If you start from k is equal to 0, x of 0, h of 1. Now this essence, this value essence increases x of 1, x of 2, x of 3. This value descends h of 0, h of minus 1, h of minus 2. Again, x of minus 1, x of minus 2. Here, this ascends h of 2, h of 1. Add all of them. Now, you see, x of 0, x of 0 is 1, h of 1 is 3. So, z, if this value is 1 and this value is 3. So, 3 into 1 is 3. I am sorry. x of 0 is 1 and h of 1 is 1. Sorry. Correct? So, x of 0 is 1 and h of 1 is 1. So, 1 into 1, it is 1. x of 1 x of 1 is 3, h of 0 is 3, so 3 into 3 is 9, h of minus 1, h of minus 2 completely zeros, h of minus 1 is 0, h of minus 2 is also 0, similarly x of minus 1 is 0, x of minus 2 is also 0, so what is left, 1 plus 9 which is equal to 10, 1 plus 9 which is equal to 10. For what values of k? All the values of k. So what I told you, we can start with k is equal to 0. k is equal to 0. So x of 0, h of 1. This direction, x value increases. In this direction, h value decreases. So x of 0, h of 1. x of 1, x of 2, x of 3. So x value increases. Here what happens? h of 1, h of 0, h of minus 1, h of minus 2. And here, going the other side, x of minus 1, x of minus 2, h of 1, h of 2. So basically this is h of 1, h of 2, h of 3. Correct? So what happens here? In this way if you see, the value of x increases. Here the value of h decreases. 
Now you have to directly substitute the values. X of 0 is 1. H of 1 is 1. X of 1 is 3. H of 0 is 1. Mm -hmm. H of 0 is 3. And here H of minus 1 is 0. H of minus 2 is 0. Here X of minus 1 is 0. X of minus 2 is 0. So completely those two uh, goes off. So what you will be having is 1 plus 9 which is equal to 10. So this is nothing but the, the mathematical formula. And you can also try for y of 3. So y of 3 is nothing but summation x of k, h of 3 minus k. If you start with x of 0, x of 0, h of 3. x value increases. h value decreases. Here x value this side is going to decrease x of minus 1, x of minus 2 and so on. This value h value increases. Okay. Then add all of them. What we already know, I am sorry, here 3, 2, 1 and then 0. 3, 2, 1, 0. Here it is, 4, 5 increases. What is x of 0? x of 0, x of 0 is 1, h of 3, h of 0, h of 1, h of 2, h of 3 is 0. Here x of 1 is 3. H of 2 is 0. X of 2 is 0. H of 1 is 1. X of 3 is 0. H of 0 is 3. The other side. X of minus 1 is 0. H of X of minus 2 is 0. So nothing is there. It is going to be 0. So this is nothing but direct, you are using the mathematical formula without knowing the math, math, background mathematical things. Right? So we are just directly using this particular formula. So what is the limitation that we have seen in both the cases? What is the limitation that we have seen in both the cases? Both in the first case and second case the limitation that we have seen is that for each and every sample we have to do the same procedure. So if you are having 10 to 15 samples then it becomes very difficult for us to manage and get the result. Is that it? Yes or no? Don't you think this is a problem? That if you are having more number of samples and if you wanted to have more number of output samples, it becomes difficult. Maybe one sample, two sample, it is completely fine. But if you want more number of samples, then it is going to be a difficult process. Fortunately, in the case of convolution, we are having a method So this particular method is what we call as a the tabular method. This method is what we call as a tabular method. Okay.